In this video we share our Lord's final coming according to Pope John Paul II. The following comes from Pope John Paul II's Catechesis for April 22, 1998. The journey towards the Jubilee, while recalling the first historical coming of Christ, also invites us to look forward in anticipation of his second coming at the end of time. This eschatological perspective, which indicates the fundamental tension of Christian existence towards the ultimate realities, is a continuous appeal to hope and together with commitment in the Church and in the world. We must not forget that the eschaton, that is the final event, understood in Christian terms is not only a goal set in the future, but a reality which has already begun with the historical coming of Christ. His passion, his death and his resurrection constitute the supreme event in the history of humanity. This has now entered its last phase, making, so to speak, a qualitative leap. For the time being, the horizon of a new relationship with God opens, characterized by the great offer of salvation in Christ. This is why Jesus can say, the hour is coming, and it is now, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear it will live. The resurrection of the dead, awaited by the end of time, receives a first and decisive realization already now, in the spiritual resurrection, the primary objective of the work of salvation. It consists in the new life communicated by the risen Christ as the fruit of his redemptive work. It is a mystery of rebirth in water and in the spirit. This twofold dimension, both present and future, of the coming of Christ emerges clearly from his words. In the eschatological discourse, which just precedes the paschal drama, Jesus foretells, they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send the angels and gather his chosen ones from the four winds, from the extremity of the earth, to the extremity of heaven, from Mark, chapter 13. In the apocalyptic language the clouds are a theophonic sign, they indicate that the second coming of the Son of Man will be fulfilled not in the weakness of the flesh, but in the divine power. These words of the speech suggest the ultimate future that will end the story. However, in the answer he gives to the high priest during the trial, Jesus takes up the eschatological prophecy by stating it in terms of an imminent event, I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of God and coming on the clouds of heaven, from Matthew, chapter 26. By comparing these words with those of the previous discourse, one grasps the dynamic meaning of Christian eschatology, as a historical process which has now begun and is on the way to its fullness. We know, on the other hand, that the apocalyptic images of the eschatological discourse, regarding the end of all things, must be interpreted in their symbolic intensity. They express the precariousness of the world and the sovereign power of Christ, in whose hands the destiny of humanity is placed. History walks towards his goal, but Christ has not indicated any chronological deadline. The attempts to predict the end of the world are therefore illusory and misleading. Christ has assured us only that the end will not come before his saving work has reached a universal dimension through the proclamation of the gospel, this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world, so that it may be witnessed to all peoples, and then the end will come, from Matthew, chapter 24. Jesus says these words to the disciples concerned about knowing the date of the end of the world. They would be tempted to think of a near date. Jesus makes them understand that many events and cataclysms must first happen and will only be the beginning of pain, from Mark, chapter 13. Therefore, as Saint Paul says, all creation groans and suffers in the pangs of childbirth, eagerly awaiting the revelation of the children of God, from Romans, chapter 8. The evangelizing work of the world involves the profound transformation of human persons under the influence of the grace of Christ. Paul pointed to the purpose of history in the Father's plan to recapitulate all things in Christ, those of heaven as well as those of the earth, from Ephesians, chapter 1. Christ is the center of the universe, who attracts everyone to himself to communicate to them the abundance of grace and eternal life. The Father gave Jesus the power to judge, because he is the Son of Man, 
from John, chapter 5. If the judgment obviously foresees the possibility of condemnation, it is nevertheless entrusted to the one who is the Son of Man, that is, to a person full of understanding and solidarity with the human condition. Christ is a divine judge with a human heart, a judge who desires to give his life. Only unrepentant rootedness in evil can prevent him from making this gift, for which he did not hesitate to face death. Thank you for supporting my channel. May God bless you and keep you. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us.